Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we are going to be taking our first look at the best decks in Standard Best of One with the release of Karlov Manor. Uh, YouTube's actually kind of funny, you can't say the word murder in titles or stuff or like screws you over in the algorithm and stuff, so we're calling it Karlov Manor here. Uh, this is part of our metagame breakdown series where we look at the best performing decks on the arena ladder. Uh, one thing to kind of preface with this video, the set's only been out for about five days so far. Uh, with the first week in standard best of one, uh, I'm getting a lot of mismatch data with some of the old set. Uh, so prefacing, this video is going to be kind of a focus on new decks or things that people are trying out, kind of things that weren't established decks that we saw a lot. So mono red aggro, Selesny enchantments, toxic, uh, the mono white decks that were doing well before are all continually doing well in this current meta. I'll do another standard best of one this week. I'll do two this week. And hopefully once we get kind of the next data range, I can have more of a, an analysis in terms of what are the best decks um, given like the new set. With best of three, it's a little bit easier because we also have MTGO results. And in general, the set I've noticed, I guess just with the fact that the standard regional qualifier our regional championships are standard best of three. There's a lot more best of three data than there's best of one. And the metas do tend to differ a little bit more just with best of one being a little bit more linear. So saying all that, we're going to start off with looking at uh, popularity of the decks that we see from Untapped GG, which aggregates user win rate data. Link for Untapped is in the video description if you want to get started. And I'll paste all these deck lists in the video description uh, and then timestamp it. So we'll go from there. Um, and then we'll look at some of the decks themselves as well. So popularity of the deck of the day, Mono Red continues to be the most popular deck at 16%. Boros Convoke is a deck that came out. Um, so this is with the addition of a couple new cards from the new set, we have Convoke that's very close to that of Pioneer. Uh, that makes up 10% of the meta right now. We have Orzhov Amalia, which is a black-white life gain deck uh, with Amalia more fair value. When you see Amalia and Pioneer, it's an infinite combo or pseudo-infinite combo. Here it's just more value uh, plays at 7%. Uh, we have Selesny Enchantment, 6%. Azorius Control's got a couple of new tools that we'll take a look at at 6%. Mono Black Agra, 5 Then we have Golgari Midrange, Mono White Humans. Um, just looking at kind of the trends, we see Mono Red continue. Uh, was as high as like 25 even up to like almost 30%. Uh, usually the start of the new season, we see an increase of Mono Red and it's kind of coming down. Convoke is starting to come up. But once we get a few more like week or two of data we can start seeing where the new trend is a lot of the values you could see over duration of time but with the new meta things are still shaping out um so jumping over sorry about that i was scoring or scouring for decks to feature um so we are looking february 6th to the 11th only five days of data platinum to mythic 200,000 games played um like i said there's a large number of decks that are just like the stock mono red and stuff like that that we'll take a look at but we're going to jump into it and Boros Convoke is the highest win rate deck. And there's a couple different ways to build it, but they're all kind of built around the same engine. The biggest issue with Boros right now is the mana base sucks for an aggressive deck. This deck very much wants untapped lands on turn one, two, three that provide potentially both colors. Unfortunately, this does not exist with the fact there's no fast lands in these colors. So you're leveraging like Sundown Pass, which kind of feels bad. Uh, Myrex is mana fixing. Some cavern of souls in there as mana fixing as well naming human more often than not but could also be naming vampire but the core of the deck what we got is novice inspector which is a thraven inspector port basically it's a one mana creature that creates an artifact you pair that with voldaren epiture or yodian frontliner you now have 12 one drops that can be used to hit gleeful demolition this deck is very explosive at times where if you could go one of these creatures voldaren or inspector on one you can Gleeful Demolition on two, potentially play another creature as well, and then Convoke. So you can get like five to six bodies out on turn two, plus get some card draw, which is pretty sweet. With all the tokens as well, you have Warden of the Inner Sky that can be powered up uh, by tapping the artifacts. Another sweet card that we got in the new set was Case of the Gateway Express. Very impressed with this card thus far. Um, two mana and it deals damage to creature equal to the number of creatures you control now notably uh, each creature you control deals one damage so if they kill your creature in response it could screw up the math so just be mindful of that if you have say five creatures and you have a creature with five toughness 
or they have a creature five toughness, but they kill one of your creatures in response, it only deals four damage. Uh, Resolute Reinforcements, multiple bodies. We have War Leader's Call, another new card from the set. This one here is an anthem for your creatures, and then each subsequent creature comes in and deals a point of damage. And then Yodian Recruiter just powers up your team and gets haste damage through out of nowhere. I played this deck quite a bit. Uh, this was probably the deck I've played most in the new standard set. I'd say maybe 30% maybe to 40% of my losses were due to just my own mana uh, more than anything else. Uh, so you do tend to kind of just lose to your mana at times. But when this deck pops off, it just feels like you're playing a different format at times. Um, so we're going to jump over and uh, sue Peter. We got a subscriber. As always, that's a great segue. Um, we are trying to hit 15,000 subs on the channel. If you do enjoy this stuff, it's free to subscribe to the channel. Um, so just hit subscribe. If you have subscribed, thank you very much. As always, likes and comments do help. So jumping over. Sorry about that. Uh, Azorius Control. So we have an Azorius Control deck. Uh, I'm going to feature two today. This one here is got some interesting tech. This one's doing a little bit better win rate. The other one's got a couple new cards as well. I think over time, some ideas can be merged from both of those. But the biggest thing when you're building control, a lot of times people build control with the best of three mindset, where best of one tends to be a different meta. The whole thing about control is tailoring your deck to those metas. Best of three tends to be more mid-range focused at times, so certain counter spells and removal may be different. Best of one tends to be a lot more aggressive, so we're seeing inclusions of things like Sunset Revelry in the main, gains you life, gives you some creatures, draws you some cards. Temporary Lockdown against Mono Red, against these Convoke decks, is really impactful of just sweeping up all their stuff. Uh, this version here has got Celestis to help ramp into more of your sweepers, full set of Depopulate as well in here. Uh, with the Depopulate, there's also the new sweeper for mana, I think, that a uh, person with the most creatures gets an Investigate token, or uh, a uh, Clue, which might be better to include in there because this can always cause a draw where the other one ne doesn't necessarily give them the draw. Uh, Deluges for card advantage, Wandering Emperor, kind of cool inclusion here is you have Sunken Citadel that makes your Anchorage cost one less to activate or um, Field of Ruin type thing so you uh, you can make this cost one less so some innovation in there to kind of play with that. There's also this version of Azorius Control so slightly less win rate but is playing some of the new cards. So this one's got a little bit more interaction. We have the new card Deduce uh, two mana to draw a card but then you investigate so you kind of put your second card draw on layaway that when you have two extra mana you can activate it at that point uh, some destroy evils which i think is more of a best of three card to be honest while there's things with a little bit higher toughness i would rather play things that can always hit creatures uh, against mono red it doesn't really hit much unless they get like a lot of power boost uh, playing get lost or even um, just sunset revolution can be more impactful um, get no more lies mana leak that exiles on counter which is pretty sweet so it just allows you to play more at an instant speed uh, the lockdowns are good here so there's a little bit less ramp in this version we're comparing the two lists they're both on 27 lines um, but this one's playing a little bit more early uh, no access to four mana sweepers could put you behind so i think having access to the slightly lower curve would be better i don't think hornlock whale is that great in the format Putting a creature on top of the library, fine, but it's usually just a one drop, so that's not like the end of the world. I think just playing like a four mana sweeper can help you bridge the gap. Similarly, just maybe one farewell. Uh, you're also getting the new card, Ezrim, Agency Chief, a five mana, five, five, kind of that life gainer sphinx type deal. Enters the battlefield and you investigate twice, and then you can sacrifice an artifact to give it your choice of lifelink hexproof or Vigilance till end of turn. So your Deduce makes your tokens, your Ezra makes the tokens, your Myrex makes the tokens kind of in there as well. Um, the one thing both of these lists could probably try out in some numbers, and I've run into some blue-white players on the ladder, uh, was just the new Surveil land, just giving you another dual land, which gives you some selection as well. Could be something that could be explored. Moving on, we go to Mono Black Aggro. So not really any new cards, but we haven't really seen the um, a more aggressively slanted mono black deck in a while. A lot of the more recent ones that have featured have been a little bit higher on the curve, more the mid range kind of invoke despair without the invoke despairs. Um, but this version is leveraging kind of the package of gigs plus cheap flyers. So Deep Cavern Bat as well as Fairy Dream Thief gives you some card advantage, a lot of cheap removal. There's the new removal spell 
Uh, in black, two mana that can't be countered, uh, exile or destroy. I can't forget the condition, but three CMC or less. That can be something else you try out. You got edicts, uh, underdog, evolve sleeper, schism for more. Attacking, pretty good against mono red, just since it dodges most of the burn outside of witch stalkers, but then could also be good offense defense. Lord Skitters, Liliana's, Shieldred's Edict, uh, Shield itself. You got a Virtue, Alcazots, and Gix in here. Um, you may want a 25th land, uh, just looking at some of the curve, but with the Gix package, you probably are okay. But interesting to just see a little bit more aggressively slanted version of the deck. Um, this is a deck that's actually pretty sweet. Uh, again, not featuring new cards, but we haven't had it on the ladder yet that has shown up. And even switching to Diamond, uh, I was surprised to see it it was putting up results or it was still around the same results on the other filter but this is a one rare mono blue tempo list but it's not the i cast counter spell 72 times with dijin uh it's like a bounce artifact kind of sub theme so you have like ginger brute network disruptor spyglass siren uh you got the ninja package with uh circuit moon circuit hacker that can make that draws you a card, the Prosperous Thief uh, gets you a treasure token, and then you have Urza's Retrofitter, as well as a Zoetic Griff that can just animate any of your artifacts, uh, which is kind of cool. You give him a buff, so you get your flyers or stuff like that. High Speed Hover Bike as kind of a bad smuggler's copter. You flash it in, tap down a creature, and then it crews for one. Fading Hope is cheap interaction as well as Machine Over Matter, which is just kind of like another Fading Hope style effect, which is kind of cool. So cheap deck to get into the format. Um, I'm actually gonna try this one out probably when I get a chance just to see how it plays out. Might be a good kind of learn the format style deck. Um, from Blue White Control, we go to Esper Control. Uh, and we're getting some new cards in this deck as well. So with here, we have like the Deduces, the No More Lies that we said, Long Goodbye is the card I was mentioning. So it's a destroy creature. Um, so just a matter of like various removal spells it's also got outrageous robbery so uh two black and an x you can exile top x cards of opponent's library and then you guys basically get to play them or cast them for whatever mana so kind of one of your win conditions steal their stuff hit your line drops kind of go from there edicts we got soul search uh target opponent reveals their hand you choose an online card from it exile that card, if it's mana value is one or less, you get to create a flyer. So kind of an odd thought sees kind of effect uh, against mono red, stuff like that. You can also get a blocker. Uh, some incidental removal, your Deluge Wandering Emperor package, and then Kaya on the top end. Uh, we're seeing some of the surveil lines being played here with Undercity Sewer. The Meticulous Archive is another version of it, and just a lot of creature lines. One thing kind of seeing from this, there's a lot of tap lines in this deck. Um, but you could pretty much play on turn two anyways where it's most of your interaction and then relying on your sweepers to catch you up. It's another deck that I think could benefit from like Sunset Revelry, just kind of bridging you to the mid to late game. You then go to Orzhov Amalia, so it's kind of a life gain deck, it's at 55%, and uh, kind of the card that they got was Case of the Uneaten Feast, so another case card here that we're seeing. And this one here is uh, your Johnny's Welcome style effect. Your Soul Ward and whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you gain a life, you gain five more life for in a turn. You get then get to hit the next mode, which is solving the case itself, which then lets you cast cards out of your graveyard. Uh, so a lot of life gain synergy. Your Lunark, your Malia gains you life. Voice gets bigger. Uh, Elasicor gets you some life. The Deep Cavern back can gain you life. Gumdrop Poisoners, kind of removal, and more waste with food. Uh, with the food and shield, drink can trigger the five life needed for Resplendent Angel. Extraction Specialist can get you back to smaller things. Alcazots, Gix, and Virtue Persistent on the top end. Your opponent is playing a lot of Mono Red or stuff like that that we're seeing. The Convoke decks, they want to push damage through, so this is a way you can just outpace your opponent with life gain. This becoming offense defense, getting flying, could all have some advantage as well. Um, and then just some utility lines in there. And lastly, just kind of showing it, usually I cap it at like 55, but seeing that people are trying out mono green, uh, it is at 53%. I did try out mono green in best of three. There was a list that 5 would on MTGO, slightly higher curve, 
Uh, we gave that a shot in best three. There's some cool cards that came out, in particular the Sharp-Eyed Rookie. So it is a two mana two two that whenever a creature power or toughness greater than it enters battlefield, it evolves. You get to put a counter on it, and you get to investigate. This kind of gets bigger, has vigilance. There's also flourishing bloomkin, which is basically I was saying that this is one of the most green cards I could think of. Just two mana, power and toughness equal to the number of force you control. It just gets bigger over time. Actually, this card is a pretty good beater. I think in best of one as well, especially since a lot of the rules burn based. Um, I would probably play four. You're not really going to disguise it that often. Uh, the evolving adaptive gets bigger as you uh, cast bigger creatures as well. So note scale for some card advantage can become a one mana two two potentially. Hard hitting questions as a deal damage effect. Uh, so you can kind of fight with that. Feral encounters another fight effect and card advantage. Beast caller gets bigger, redistributes the counters. Archdruid's Charm is a new card, uh, mostly going to be used for XL Artifact Enchantment or put counters and deal damage. This version is on 3 Pelucranos. I actually think Bloated Contaminator is a better card in the deck. The Contaminator, while you lose the reach, it has Trample, which against a lot of the small decks, especially Convoke, can push through damage. Proliferate, while not necessarily winning through Toxic lines, you have a lot of things that get counters, so putting counters on your creatures and doubling or like adding more is a powerful line. And then Sentinel the Lost City as a way to get some uh, car virtual card advantage through the uh, map tokens. And then lastly, Doomscar Warrior as a way to kind of put power on it and get some card advantage as well. Uh, just very simple mana base for a Cinebus issue in it. So that's it for best of one for the week. Um, like I said, if you, I'm going to do another video. Hopefully we get some more variety. But the first week, a lot of people are kind of waiting and seeing in the first couple days. Still early in the season as well, so we're seeing a lot of kind of stock mono red. I don't think mo any of the additions to mono red, the creatures really fit it that well. Um, they're they're all like the kind of morph synergy, which I think is too slow. Um, the kind of cloak it, flip it type thing like that, where it's just like Squee, Godric, Forge are just all much more efficient at doing what they need to do in a mono red aggressive deck. That's it. Take it easy. Hope you like it. See you next time.